Hi, it's Lorraine Rogers back again with my A to Z of watercolour painting. Now, if you refer back to my lesson one and lesson two, uh, you will have been practicing your flat wash, and you've probably discovered by now it's not as easy as it looks. So, the main problem you've probably encountered is streakiness. So, that could be caused by you having too thick paint, in other words, too much pigment in your paint. Or perhaps you haven't uh, made your brush strokes delicate enough. Um, not enough water is the other thing. So today I'm going to do that flat wash but this time with two colours and I'm going to take it through to a landscape. So you'll be able to incorporate that flat, flat wash into a nice landscape. So here we go. First of all I'm going to mix up some cobalt blue. So you'll have this already in your palette. And it's pretty hard for me to tell you exactly how much water and how much paint. But I'm just here to say don't put too much pigment in there. If you go too light you can always build up your colour with a second wash. But if you go too heavy and your pigment's too thick or your wash is too thick, you've got nowhere to go from there except the bin. So mixed up some cobalt blue. Give your brush a good wash out because you don't want your next colour to be dirty. So my next colour is raw sienna. Remember these are Dale, Dale Rowney paints. Uh, so the raw sienna is this beautiful gold colour. Raw sienna and some of the other brands aren't as vibrant as this one. Let's see how you go. So I usually stand up to do my washes because that way you're working from your shoulder. Need my glasses on. So starting from the top of the page. With your board sloped, you want that bead of water along the bottom. And my brush strokes are quite delicate. I'm not pushing the pigment into the paper. I'm just floating the brush across the top. Okay, so now I'm going to change to raw sienna. So I give my wash a big squish out. I try not to touch the bottom of my water bowl because sometimes you get a bit of sludge down there and you don't want that corrupting your wash. So I've picked up a bit of cobalt blue there, washed my brush out again. And then I'm coming right down to the bottom of the page with this raw sienna. The other problem you'll commonly encounter, and I do all the time, is that you haven't mixed up enough wash. So, everybody does that. You always use more than what you think. But as you get more experience, you get quicker at mixing up your wash. So you want even wetness. If you do end up with stripes, there's a little trick that I've devised um, where I use this very soft big tackle on brush and if the wash is streaky, you can just get your wash in ever so gently while it's still wet is just uh, swish it backwards and forwards in sort of a herringbone fashion very very gently because this is lifting pigment off the paper as well and that you'll find will even out your wash but it does still have to be wet when you do that if it's partly dry and partly wet the brush will actually make streaks across your paper so I don't know whether you can see that there's quite a shine on the paper so it's really wet. When the shine's just going, we're going to add another wash or another bit of colour. And this time I'm using cobalt blue a little bit more thickly. So more pigment than what we had in the sky here, less water. So I've got cobalt blue and to that I'm going to add permanent rose to make a nice mauve colour. I prefer my modes to be leaning a bit more towards the cobalt blue than too pink. 
so what you're doing now is touch your brush to the paper and see how that's dispersing a lot it just means that your paper is a little bit too wet and sometimes if you've got a fan going or it's a hot day the paper might dry differently in different areas as well but if it's too wet you just need to wait a minute or so the other thing is you'll notice I haven't taped my paper down and I don't find a need to do that uh, sometimes it does buckle a little bit when it's very wet but I don't have a problem with that some people tape down uh, I just like paint to paint to the edge Okay, so I'll try again, drop my brush on, see how it hasn't spread quite as much. So I'm going to put a row of hills on here. And what you would want to avoid is doing this kind of dabby sort of thing. Try and get the paint on as quickly as you possibly can. I'm not going to worry too much about this running down here. I want the hills to be nice and soft. I'm going to go back while it's all still wet with another mix of that raw sienna and this time with a little bit of the blue in it just to green it a little bit. It's all still wet. I should actually change to a bigger brush at this point. You need to adjust your brush size to the size of the painting you were doing. Like I said, you will always tend to need more wash than what you've mixed up, so be ready to mix up more wash very quickly. So that underneath wash wasn't quite dry. But if, it's, if you find it's nearly dry, you better to let it dry completely and come back afterwards. Uh, I'm going to lift out a little, maybe a track now. And I always suggest you exaggerate the perspective on this. So this is actually another part of the lesson, lifting out. So to lift out, your brush needs to be drier than the paper or the paint on the paper. Because your brush is drier, it will draw the paint into it rather than putting wetness onto the paper. It'll lift it off. So there we've got a little bit of lightness, a little track leading your eye through. And from there we can just build it up as much as we like. So that's pretty much the end of lesson three. So if you come back to my next lesson, you'll see me build on this again. So come and see me at www.sidewalk-gallery.com.au and good luck. Bye for now.